Hi, my name is John Antonakis. I'm Professor of Organizational Behavior at the Faculty of Business and Economics, HSC, at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. I'm also the Editor-in-Chief of the Leadership Quarterly. Lately, I've been studying the production of research and noticed that five diseases stifle whether research can be produced that is useful for society. The first disease is what I call significosis. That has to do with a fixation of, on statistically significant results. The second is neophilia, which is an obsession for novelty. The third is theoria, fetishizing new theory. Fourth is aragorium, a lack of rigor in theory and empirical testing. And the fifth disease is what I call disjunctivitis, a penchant to produce salami slices of research and lots of trivia. Now, the reason why we have these five diseases is because of the incentive structures that institutions and journals have placed, giving authors a particular incentive to do research in a specific way. Let me give you an example. Um, researchers have to produce lots of quality and quantity to get published. But those two things, quality and quantity, are at loggerheads. It's very, very difficult to produce a large quantity of quality research. So invariably, researchers may cut corners. Some will do what we call harking, hypothesizing after the results are known. They will fit a theory on the empirics that they have observed. Um, other researchers may do what's called p-hacking. Now, they don't do this consciously. P-hacking has to do with, say, removing certain data points or adding certain controls so that the results become significant. Why do they need them to be significant? So that they get published and accepted in the journal. So because of all these problems, different kinds of research which could be useful for society, like exploratory research or null results research, are not published. I'm trying to change this at the Leadership Quarterly by introducing a new way in which we will evaluate research and the types of papers we will publish. For example, I am accepting registered reports where authors will submit a proposal to run an experiment or to do a certain study. We review that, the authors gather the data, and then no matter how the cards fall, we will publish the study. This takes away the incentive to produce a novel finding or significant results. We also have results masked reviews where perhaps the data is already gathered and we will review only the first part of the manuscript without the results and then we will give the results to the reviewers. If the manuscript passes the first stage, then the second stage will be accepted if, of course, again, the authors follow faithfully um, from what they propose they would do. We will also publish exploratory uh, research and all different kind of research that can help to inform basic um, research, but also policy. Um, so all these things, I think, are very important to bear in mind. And you, as an author, can help. Firstly, by informing yourself of how these diseases may be stifling research and how you can put some pressure on the gatekeepers, the people who control the publication process, but also institutions who judge you on uh, certain research criteria. We all need to join together so that we can improve how research is done, because for me, it's unconscionable that taxpayer money is being used to produce research that is not useful. Thank you for watching this podcast.